G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and welcome back to part two of how to survive a deadly accident with your horse. I am lucky enough right now to be, uh, I've done a clinic in Arizona and I'm lucky enough to be with my wife and niece from Australia at the beautiful uh, Grand Canyon. We've just been to Sedona for a couple of days, we're here in the Grand Canyon. And uh, we are right above right now the trail where if you've ever seen the, uh, the donkeys, the mules when they go down the, sorry donkeys, not donkeys, mules when the mules go down into the Grand Canyon and they right below us is where they spiral down there and I went for a walk down that thing this afternoon and uh, a lot of hikers go down there too but there's a sign there on the wall on the thing and it's signposted and it says it's for hikers but it says do you have a realistic plan and I thought it was a, I took a picture of it I thought it was a great thing to say do you have a realistic plan not a plan but a realistic plan and I think that's where a lot of people may have trouble with their horses is they don't develop a realistic plan or really a realistic, probably realistic about what might happen. And the other day you saw the how to avoid a deadly accident with a horse video and I said that my young horse, well he's not that young now but young enough, Bundy was tied up and I wheeled that um, hot water heater out of the thing and you kind of pulled back and jumped forward. Anyway, the first time I videoed that video, my microphone ran out halfway through, so I had to redo it again. And a point I missed making in the second one that I made in the first one was, think about this, where you keep your horse, how many people have you seen, they're getting their horse saddled up or whatever, and someone does something like wheels, something like that around the corner and the horse pulls back. And what does the person do? <laughs> Gives that person dirty to look like, how dare you interrupt me while I was, you know, be inconsiderate and wheel that thing around the corner. What they really should do is go, oh wow, something as simple as that can make my horse pull back and I'm about to take this horse for a trail ride and I guarantee you on a trail ride, especially going down the Grand Canyon, on a trail ride there are things way more scary than that guy wheeling that uh, hot water heater around the corner that might upset my horse. So be realistic about your, your uh, horse's expertise, your expertise, and think about those things. You know, I did a meme last year and it said, take everything your horse does as valuable information and not as a personal insult. If you're going to saddle him up and he pins his ears and doesn't want to get saddled, I actually had a, uh, someone comment on my uh, post on my YouTube, not my YouTube, sorry, my Facebook this afternoon. They said, you know, I've got a question. I went to saddle up my horse this afternoon and when I went to saddle him up, he pinned his ears and uh, tried to cow kick at me as I did the girth up. Anyway, I didn't have time to work on it because my daughter was waiting to go for a trial ride. <laughs> okay, and I said to her, take everything your horse does as valuable information and not as a personal insult. Okay, and I said to her, if I was saddling a horse that pinned its ears and tried to cow kick me when I did the, the girth up, I would not be going on a trail ride because that horse is telling me, hey, today's not the day, something's going wrong here. I'd want to sort that out before I ever went on a trail ride on that particular horse. So just make sure that you're realistic about, you know, your horse and those, those things, like I just said, help you be realistic. Your horse is not, horses don't lie, horses don't make up stuff just to annoy you. Horses are pretty honest about stuff and so, you know, be realistic about what your horse is telling you, what their mood's like that day and it might save you a great deal of trouble in the future. Hope that helps. See you guys next time.